because he hath inclined his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. The sorrows of death come past me, and the pains of hell gath hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then called I upon the name of the Lord, O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous, yea, our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple, I was brought low, and he helped me. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with me. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed, therefore have I spoken. I was greatly afflicted. I said in my haste, all men are liars. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of the saints. Amen. The Lord bless you. You may be seated. On behalf of the Chapel United Pentecostal Church family and friend, we would like to extend condolences to the family in the time of your bereavement. It is not something that we actually plan for, but in the midst of life, we face these circumstances. We want you to know that we are praying for you as a church family. And we continue to encourage you as you go through this difficult moment. God, in his own wisdom, he knows best. And Sister Green, we just want to encourage you to hold on to the faith. I know it is hard, it's difficult, but with Christ in the vessel, you can smile at the storm. At this time, we're having a musical selection, and this will be done by Mr. and Mrs. Reynolds, family friend. We're going to invite them to come. Bless the Lord, everyone. Bless the Lord. We're here to celebrate the passing of our friend, Ricardo Green, Deacon Ricardo Green. Well, maybe absent in the body, but he's present with Christ. According to Scripture, Second Corinthians 5, verses 8. Sing along with us as we worship. In Jesus' precious name. I faced a mountain that I never faced before. That's why I'm calling on you, Lord. I know it's been a while, but Lord, please hear my prayer. I need you like I never have before I faced a mountain that I never faced before That's why I'm calling on you Lord I know it's been a while but Lord, please hear my prayer. I need you like I never have before. Sometimes it takes a mountain. Sometimes I try. To get a hold of me Your love is 
I thought I could control Whatever life would throw my way But this I will admit Has brought me to my knees I need you Lord And I'm not ashamed to say worship him hallelujah we can depend upon the word of the Lord amen looking from this side it seems to be so sad amen we have so much to rejoice about 
in the fact that our brother have a relationship with God we have all reason to praise him and to worship him amen we have in tribute in the following order the first one will be done by CBI Caribbean Bible School this is done by Sister A. Gray and we will be having relatives representing the Green family they will be coming in that order everybody praise the Lord Jesus everybody praise the Lord again hallelujah hallelujah to God be the glory great things he has done hallelujah in September 2013 at the Caribbean Bible Institute we met a brother who changed our lives completely he was Ricardo Green, affectionately called Brother Ricky. He was a man of principle and discipline who loved the Lord and hated evil. He was a friend in no uncertain terms to us, freely giving us of his time and strength to help those of us in need. He would give us rides home, a great encouragement, and had a kind of spirit that lifted you out of sadness to a more jovial state. He loved discussing the scriptures and would always share his thoughts on any matter we discussed. He was hardworking, always early, and committed to his church and family. Brother Green loved his wife dearly, whom he always spoke about. He loved his daughters, who were never far from his mouth. It was clear he was a man fulfilled. A man of honor and honesty. A true man. A man of God. Who could forget his love of favored waters? He loved flavored water. Not sweet, but quite interesting. He never could just have plain water. Always had to be flavored water. We remember our outings to Devon House, our study groups, our school projects. He was always there, never disappointed, and always did his best. We loved Brother Ricky, and he loved us. It is really sad to see him go, but we know that he is with the Lord. Hallelujah. More blessed than we can know. We love him and remember him and honor him today. Thank you, Brother Green for being a true man of God. God bless you, saints. Representing the Greens family, your time.
Okay, we're moving on. See the person is not here. We'll be taking the second scripture. Taking from coming. Okay. say hi auntie sharon i'm the nephew of ricardo green and i wrote something about you know the time uncle um ricky was on i should i say with us how nice and wonderful our uncle was all right my uncle ricardo green my uncle my uncle ricky was a great person a man of god someone that i look up to a role model i always say to myself how does he do it he just keep going from work to church play a good role model at home at times when he leaves his work he heads straight to church the bible study some nights i wonder how he find time for himself whatever my uncle does he couldn't help it he was just from a family that's always moving I guess he or they which is in the family got that from Martin Luther King. Quote unquote, if you, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep on moving. My mother could call on her brother for anything. If he can't show up, then he would advise her. If there was anything that you wanted to get fixed at home, my mother would sometimes call him, especially something to do with pipes. He's good in plumbing. When I say plumbing, don't think that's just it. He was a, like a jack of all trades. My father, Courtney, said Uncle Ricky was like a brother to him. They used to go fishing together when they were younger. And what dad used to say, anytime Uncle Ricky would made a catch, he would call on the name of the Lord, also thanking him. At times he used to walk up and down, calling on Jesus. Some would say he was in his spirit. You know, when he, night times, Uncle Ricky used to be in his anointing. It was always about him and his God. I also remember my cousin Tessa, which he heard, got baptized. He left from work at nights and go at her house and do Bible study with her. He would always encourage you to give your life to God. I must also tell you, he was the one that encouraged my mother to get baptized. When she was going through a lot, she called him one late night. She told him the difficulty she faced. And he told her she was going through some real tests and God needs her. My, my uncle loves his family. He was a, a man that always there for his family. I know if we don't see him he is always covering us notice i said the word family using this word family means a lot to me sometimes we consider our fa our family or wife or kids alone it's right but you can left you can't left out your father and mother or no time of day you should never your brother your sister your nieces nephews all the rest just look around and you see the love and care you should never lock family out. Sometimes we have all kind of thinking. But I learned all of this through this time of my uncle's death. Never to judge. We get angry at times and say things that we don't really mean. But no matter what, the love is always there. I come from a family that say things out of anger and rage. But they love each other. Yup, I know. For my uncle, he was always being calm, humble, humble. Uncle Ricky was just a, such a gentleman. Um, Ganga, would, Ganga would say, that's his mother, um, Vivian Green, would say, Uncle Ricky is her sweetheart. For him to get upset, it must be something that really bothered him. I know he loved his wife and his daughters, also his grandson, a lot. 
you know it's upsetting for your parents to watch their children heading the wrong way there are times when you walk around and you see some people that you know from when you're a child you know abusing their health taking drugs and they're still alive going about makes you wonder but God knows best God know what is best my uncle I will never forget you thank you good afternoon church just a little poem we put together for uncle Ricky and I would like to say my condolences to you mrs. Green and to Jodian and Kadia we miss you uncle Ricky dear Ricky what can we say gone are the chances to laugh and play never a walk are taught to be said no longer will the sun shine on your face it's all right though we'll shed our tears the strength you gave us we know very little fear we we have packed away your bags and we have packed away your tools and close all that's due your rest and relaxation is long overdue mama your sisters brother nieces nephew and i will always miss you we'll hold strong though the lord has our uncle for he did man slash woman no wrong a trusted man a devoted uncle brother and friend a great father to the very end we'll meet again of this i'm sure you'll help when it's time to open heaven's door relax and feel relax and feel the warmth of the sun and gaze at the moon be patient uncle ricky we'll be together soon we miss you so much words can't explain we lay our pens down then we kneel and pray god bless you church hallelujah can we just worship him one more time amen we give god thanks for those beautiful comment in regard towards our brother and this time we'll be having the second scripture lesson taken from first corinthians chapter 15 from verse 51 to the verse 58 and this will be done by Annie Sangster, family friend. Bless the Lord everybody. Second lesson will be read from 1 Thessalonians 15 verses 51 to 58. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we all shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality then shall be brought to pass a saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory O death where is thy sting O grave where is thy victory the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law but thanks be to god which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Here ends the holy word of God. What an assurance this scripture has to give us. Can we praise the Lord? Can we change our position just a little bit? Just stand and just lift our hands and just worship Him. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. We are in a lively service. Praise the name of the Lord. As you remain seated at this time, we'll be having a song by Faith Apostolic Ministry. We're going to invite them to come 
at this time faith apostolic ministry god bless them God. Can we praise the Lord, everybody? Can we just pause right now, lift our hands, and just worship King Jesus? God is truly an awesome God. And when you have Jesus and you die, you know where we go, right? So I just want to encourage the Green family and by, by extension, the Faith Apostle, the Faith Chopper family in Jesus' name. Just worship with us as we minister in song. Bless God. Could not be here. John saw the city. Oh, yes, he did. John caught a glimpse of the golden throne. Tell me all about it. Go right on around the throne. He saw the crystal sea. There's got to be more. What will it be? I want to go to that city he saw.
to walk. Hey, the streets and our gold. And I want to run. I want to run. Well, the angels have tried. Jerusalem, I want to rest on the banks of your river. In that city, city of God, city of God, Jerusalem. their hands and let's worship him he's so worthy hallelujah he's so great beautiful singing want to give god thanks we'll be having tribute in the following order miss lily marie and representing staff of the ray and nephew limited followed by pastor victor dow's brother in christ then we have the last one elsha upc you will come in that order Good afternoon, church. This is a tribute for the life of Ricardo Green through the eyes of J. Ray and nephew. Ricardo Eldemir Green, fondly called Ricky, started his journey at J. Ray and nephew in February 1984 as a clerk in the raw material department, which at that time was called Stores. Ricky was promoted to senior warehouse assistant and served for a period of 17 years until he exited in 2001. Because of his excellent track record, he was able to rejoin the company in August 2004 and served another 16 years as warehouse specialist in the raw material department of logistics. Ricky saw the company go through many changes which impacted the delivery of his job, namely moving from manual to electronic record keeping, ISO and HACCP certification. He embraced these changes because for him it was about doing his job. But who was Ricardo Green? They say a chip never fall for um, f and a chip never falls far from the block. And in that regard, we can agree that Ricardo's passion for work was inherited from his father, Roberto Green, known as Cubano, himself a former Jerry and nephew employee for many years. They say he was a workaholic, an introvert and a man of God. Next to God, his work was his life, and he did it as reference in Colossians 3, 22 to 24, reading thus, Obey your earthly masters in everything, and do it, not only when their eyes is on you, and to curry their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Whatever you do, do it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord God, Lord Jesus Christ you are serving. End of quote. To demonstrate Ricky's deep To demonstrate how deeply Ricky cared about his job, 
he, he wore his tested glasses, but also used the magnifying glass while inspecting invoices to ensure he missed none of the fine prints that could be a deterrent to the company. While Ricardo was an introvert at work, he was quite a talker at home, where he told courts from his, to his family to report on the day's activity, which also included tales of his interaction with different personalities. In this regard, his family knew his co-workers by name, if not by face. Intent to completing his job effectively and efficiently, Ricardo enrolled his family into the job as reported. He would come home armed with his folder and crack and peel label. He would search for the relevant batch numbers while the family record on the sticker. The following morning, he would tap the respective pallets as they are offloaded from the containers. This was a goal-oriented and success-driven employee. A stickler for tidiness, he could oftentimes be seen clearing his workspace and that caused some people to think he was a janitor. His record and filing system were excellent and it is reported that he once lectured a staff member over 20 minutes before granting him a copy of an invoice because he had warned him that he would lose his document if he did not file them. He had an enviable punctuality and attendance record, also wearing a pleasant smile. When he frowned, you know something was wrong. The RMI staff knew that Ricardo took his vacation leave in December of each year. As for him, that was the time to be with family, and you better not try to have him change it. This was even more important when he became a grandfather, as his delight was the journey to the US to spend time with his daughter and grandson, John Paul Wong III. In 2019, Ricky was transferred from the all-male bullpen to a new location in an all-female rose garden. This proved to be an easy adjustment for him, not only because they embraced him, but also because he was of his easygoing personality. My personal managerial responsibilities for Ricardo began in September 2019, and I can truly say that he delivered what was required of him. And whenever I did something that he asked of me, he would always say, God bless you, Lily. Although he was physically challenged in recent times and began walking with a cane, he was still independent and could always be seen walking the compound and scurrying through the midriff of containers to ensure that he not only located the information he needed, but did so in a timely manner. For this, he was awarded the Logistics Campari Star Award, August 29, 2019. Ricardo has left an indelible mark and we thank you, thank him for his 33 years of quality service. On July 16th, Ricardo made his transition. And while we will miss him, this workaholic who has run the race and finished the course, we can only imagine him now with his pleasant smile while he walks around in glory making sure that all records are filed away and in order. On behalf of the J. Ray and Nevy family, we extend our sincere condolences to his family and say thank you for sharing this special person with us. When men on earth have done their best, angels in heaven rejoice. May his soul rest in peace. 
Praise the Lord, everyone. Let me see the hands of all the saints of God in the house. Raise your hand, let me see. Amen, that's so wonderful. You know, I've listened to the tributes and uh, I might be a little different in how I present my tribute, but I would use two terms to summarize this gentleman. Firstly, he's a true Christian. And secondly, he's a role model. There are several things we could say to indicate the kind of a person that we have lost in the flesh. But it's not really a loss, it's a gain in the kingdom because he's now in the arms of God. Praise the Lord. If you know this song, I'd like you to sing it with me. He leadeth me, O oh, blessed thought, O oh, words with heaven. again he needed Sometimes it seems of deepest gloom. Sometimes where Eden's bowers bloom. What else? Sing it in worship. green that you have not lost what you have gained it is God who led your husband a good brother of this assembly spoke to me by telephone and indicated an experience he had 
in the spirit he saw brother green lying on his back on his rostrum as if he was dying and then he saw brother green's spirit leave his body and ascend it on high then he recognized that brother green is now dead because brother green was in the hospital at the time in a critical condition so when sister green called him and uh, told him that brother green had passed on he said to sister green he went at 1 35 a.m when she was in a quandary she looked at the the letter the the indicator they have a filing system that indicated the time when the person has passed away it was exactly 1 35 so god was leading the man so we look at the illness as something that was bad something terrible but not in the eyes of god god was leading him lead him into his heavenly rest it's the first funeral I've been at where a saint is cremated. The Pentecostal principle is that we lay the body in the ground. But you never know. I don't know if you had saved some money, Sister Green, by doing it this way. I'm not sure, but the point I'm making is that God is leading all of his children. I don't care what sort of an illness you're going through. I myself, I'm not very well in body. But I know it is the hand of God that's leading. I'm paying a tribute, but I want this tribute to benefit you. About 10 years ago, we invited a, a preacher from the United States of America to preach at a convention in this assembly. When he came, he was speaking with Pastor Grizz and a few other members in the office upstairs. I was there, my wife was there, and he called my wife. This man has never met me before, he's never seen me, doesn't know my color, nothing about me. And he was able to tell my wife what my blood type was. And he said to her, look into my eyes. Your husband is going to become very, very sick. Or the sickness is not unto death. And that was about nearly 10 years ago. And my wife only told me that several months ago. So while she was talking, I was crying. Because I recognize that God was actually leading my life. Sing it again for me. I really feel led to sing this song. I like to minister to somebody. I like God to minister to you here today. He leadeth me. Lift your hand and sing. That Come on, sing it in worship. He lead at me. His faithful follower. His faithful follower. For my sin. For my sin. He needed me. 
Let's worship him with you. Let's for a while. It's been a little while. Worship him, God. Worship him, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, I have a little philosophy that it is difficult to go to hell. It's easier to make it to heaven. It might sound paradoxical or you might not agree. But here's my reasoning. God has provided so many things and means to save you even a funeral service like this memorial service is an avenue for salvation are you with me i don't know what the preacher is going to say but i would hope that somebody would try make up their mind to find god before we get to that part of the service here praise God it's really difficult if you really get to hell make it to hell then you would have fought literally fought against God because he has provided so many ways and avenues to save you even a service like this many people don't come to a funeral service prepared to find God but I dare say if you don't this one will be on record that God was trying to help you trying to lead you praise God forgive me for seeming to delay but I'm really trying to follow the leading of God I I could speak words about our brother that has passed so we have things written down here what i like that whatever i do i bring god into the picture are you with me lift your hands if you're with me still praise god i'd like to say also that the devil doesn't control anything he has control over nothing god is the one that controls this planet earth and unfortunately this usually was angel of light has fallen and he's operating as if he is ruler down here but he's not god is still in control one more song and then i'll depart they all shall sweetly oh. obey thy will peace sing as in this one peace peace be still Peace be still. Peace be still. Sing that part again. They all. They all shall sweetly obey thy will. Peace be still.
just lift our hands and just love the Lord Jesus hallelujah praise God praise God praise God and I spoke with sister green she advised me that this is a song that my dear brother Green used to listen to and so she requests that I minister this song today hallelujah thank you Jesus Sometimes this courage, but not defeated, cast down, but not destroyed. There are times I don't understand. But I believe it's turning around for me. Sometimes discouraged, but not defeated. Cast down, but not destroyed. Times I don't understand, but I believe it's turning around for me. I've had struggles and disappointment. There are times I felt so alone. Some of my friends today let me down, but I still believe it's turning around for me. I. Struggles, yes, Lord, 
and disappointment There are times I felt so alone My friends, they they don't understand But I still believe it's turning around for me Around for me Around for me Around for me It's turning around for me Shed around for me Around for me Around for me It's turning around for me I can see the breaking of day God is making a way A change is coming for me If I stand strong and believe There's no reason to doubt I know He's working it out Oh, it's turning around See the breaking of day My God is making a way A change is coming for me If I stand strong and believe There's no reason to doubt I know He's working it out It's turning around for me Concerning me, oh, sooner or later, he'll turn in my bed. Say, sooner or later, he'll turn in my favor. It's turning around. Oh, 
just to stand and begin to magnify the King of Kings. Begin to magnify the King of Kings. Let's magnify him. Let's, let's give God the glory. Come on. Come on. I've blessed the Lord at all times. His praise. Woo! Yes, seven more seconds. Seven more seconds. Yes, 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 yes. For the Lord is good. Things will not always be like this. Amen. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated. God is good. And all the time. Amen. God bless you. Thank Brother Kelly for that song. Amen. Uh, the, the family, the Green family, was worshiping at, at that church for some point. It's Pen Pentecostal Tabernacle Helsha. I'm just going to ask all the folks. Are all the saints from Pentab Helsha, just to stand. I mean, we'd like to recognize you. Oh my God, God, God is good. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. But for, for, for over 30 odd years, Sir Green was working at J. Ray and Neville. And I know that he was loved, very loved there. And we'd like to acknowledge. Uh, uh, the director for the department, Major Andre Sterling. I was going to invite you just to stand. And the immediate manager, Miss Lily Marie. She, she spoke earlier on. And is there any, the, the members or the staff from Jerry and Neville? I was going to invite you to stand. And the staff, amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You may be seated. Bishop Garfield Daly. God bless you, sir. 
Amen. And the saints from Faith Apostolic Ministry. I'm just going to invite you just to stand. We want to acknowledge you. Amen. Amen. God is good. God is good. Amen. You know that Sir Green also attended the Caribbean Bible Institute. I'm just going to ask any representative from the Caribbean Bible Institute. We also want to acknowledge you for you to just stand. Amen. God, whoa. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Sir Green was really a man of God. It was said there. He was an ardent member of Faith Chapel. He, was a de he served as a deacon. He, he served as an as a ardent Sunday school teacher. And he was also the missions director. I remember one time when <laughs> Sir Green was ill. And he had a challenge in terms of standing. And we were praying for someone. And I said to Sir, Sir... You, you can sit, you know. He looked at me and said, no. Stand up like a soldier and pray. And that's very commendable. He is really a warrior and he will be missed. I'm going to ask Minister Lewis from Hersha and he'll be coming to, to do a condolences on behalf of his, of his pastor, Reverend Klebert Russell. After which, I'm going to ask Mrs. Sharon Green the wife and she'll be coming to do a remembrance can we shout a praise of hallelujah, hallelujah. can we try that again can we shout a praise of hallelujah? hallelujah it is the highest praise we give God the glory and the honor he deserves it none of us here deserves any praise hallelujah let me use the time quickly to greet praise God Reverend Crooks in his absence praise be to God the assistant superintendent the United Pentecostal Church I love to say in Jamaica but off Jamaica Reverend George King, who is the Presbyter of Region 1, let me greet you in the wonderful name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Minister Nelson, Dwayne Nelson, who is a part of the moderating team, I also want to greet you in Jesus' name. And Marie Lewis, Minister, I greet you also. Kareem, who is the BPTA President of the United Pentecostal Church in Jamaica, let me greet you. Let me use this opportunity to greet a man that I respect dearly, Minister Doubt. Amen. Praise be to God. You shall not die, but you shall live and declare the word and the work of the Lord. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. You're inspired by the Holy Ghost. Praise be to God. And also want to greet Bishop Daly. Amen. Praise be to God. Let me greet you also. In the wonderful and exalted name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want to greet the saints of the house all of faith, faith chapel. I want to greet my family who is here with me. Praise God. My wife, she's here for the very first time. Very first time, faith chapel. Welcome to faith chapel. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. So I stand here on behalf of Reverend Klebert Russell who is my pastor and also sister Joan Russell who is the pastor's wife to offer my sincere or their sincere all of us sincere gratitude and condolence I should say not gratitude condolence I'm so sorry I'm going too fast let me slow down I'm just remembering that we're not going to Dovecot or Medaris so let me slow down a little bit Praise be to God. We're not, going, we're not going to leave here. We're having an evening service. And so let me offer my sincere condolence to the Greens family. Sister Green, you are a precious sister to me. 
You gave me more than I deserve. You know what I'm talking about. And so I look at that as something of greatness. Praise be to God. I want to offer condolence to Jody and Green and Katie and Green. When we came to know the Greens, Ricardo and Sharon Green, we realized that we had something greatly in common. And she told me, my son, his name is Ricardo. My two daughters, one is Cadian and one is Jodian. And so we had a great thing in common. And so we had a bond with that family for a time. Praise be to God. So I just want to say to you, be very strong in the Lord. I want to greet also the ministers that are in the audience. I see Minister Kevin Robinson and his wife. Praise God. I want to acknowledge you too, sir. Praise God and all of the ministers and the deacons and all of the workers that are in this assembly. If ever a time like this, ever a time like this, we need to press towards the mark of the eye calling of God. If ever a time like this, praise be to God, hallelujah, Jesus is my best friend, amen, hallelujah. And so the people of God, hallelujah, should be best friends with Jesus. And when we are all best friends with Jesus, we all come together in one accord. We preach the same gospel, we say the same thing. We have the same Holy Spirit. The Lord bless you richly today. Amen. And let us continue to give God the glory, give him the praise, and give him all the honor. In Jesus' name. Praise the mighty name of Jesus, the wonderful name of Jesus. I'm here to give a remembrance, but I don't have remembrance, you know, because every move I make, every step I take, there is Ricardo Green. That picture there, that one with that picture and that red blouse and that, that's when he engaged me. You see? That's when he engaged me. And I was a social person. Had a lot of friends. But when my husband, when Ricardo Green met me, I lost all my friends. He just, he wasn't a sociable person. And he just captured me and grabbed me. And I lost all my friends. But it was a good thing. But you see, my husband is like this. He wanted me all to himself. I didn't have no friends. Lost family and everything. But he was like that. I was his only friend. I was the first woman in his life. And he possesses me. He possesses me from day one. At first it, you know, but after a while I just felt safe. Because, tell you one thing about Ricardo Green. He takes care 
of his family. He took care of me. When I met him, I had not, he used to share his dinner with me. He used to share his dinner with me. Every evening he came home from work. I used to live nearby. And then he'll collect his dinner from his mother. And he'll carry it. And he'll share it with me. He was, he was so possessive. He, when he used to go to work and ride his bicycle, go to work. And he'll ride his bicycle, come home and lunchtime over. <laughs> he was just like that. We were friends. We were everything. We did everything together. Everything together. Sheer evenings work. There are times when I'm employed by Ray and Nevio. I'm employed by that company. Because all those work he was carrying, I used to tease him all the while, say, when I'm going to get my paycheck. Because when he brought home those work, and we sat up until 10, 11 o'clock, doing all of those things, I look at him and say, listen to me. When I'm going to get my paycheck, name come home, Mark Sharon Green. Because that's how he was. Everything that happened at his workplace, I knew everyone there, his, his workers. Couldn't place space on them, but he called them names so often that some of them had started was to, you know? Sanjay. <laughs> I have met that man as yet, you know? I have met him. Oh! All right. <laughs> All right, Sanji. And he'll call the name of some of the workers then. Those who gave him a lot of trouble, a lot of stress. He'll constantly call them name. And, and sometimes I'll say to him, say, listen to me. If you die tomorrow morning, no. All them going to do is give you a good read. So said, so done. They did give him a good read. Beautiful read. But he was so... Everything that he, he involved in, he possessed it. His salvation, he tried when he got baptized at 17. And he said he was, when I met him at 20, he said the reason why I'm coming to the church because he was trying so hard and he couldn't get the Holy Ghost and all of that. I came to church and I got saved. And after that, I said, boy, I went purpose in my heart. And I, and, I, and I talked to him, and I talked to him, until he finally came back to church, and he got saved. I remember when he came home that, 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 that night with him pants out and shirt. Pastor Grizzle was his pastor, then said, when he got the Holy Ghost, he was underneath the benches. And I said, that is my husband. He was kicking and all of that. And he possessed, when, when he got saved, he possessed that same possessive towards serving God. Serving God. He went to ABC, they had that faith chapel. Then he went to CBI. He just always wanted to consume the knowledge of God. Because he was a teacher in Christ. I used to tell him all the while, say, sometime I'd ask him to explain things for me. Teach me things. Because when he finished, I knew that, you know, he was just so blessed with that. He was a teacher. He just loved God. And that made him a good husband. Sometimes he and his daughter them would get into riff. And they knew why he got into riff with them. Because all he was concerned about their soul. All he was concerned about is their soul. Everything he would talk about. Their soul. Their soul. My remembrance not going to let me. I won't mourn my husband. He had many desire. But his greatest desire was to make it in the kingdom of God. And that desire has been fulfilled. Every other desire that he had, he wanted was to drive a SUV, one of those things. But he couldn't carry that to heaven anyway. 
But the night when my husband died, I got up about 1.30 that night. And I, the Lord woke me up and I kept get up and I start praising God. And, and I was speaking in tongues and I was, you know, excited and all of that. And I was speaking in tongues and back of my mind I said, why God was letting me speak in tongues and all of that. And I felt good. I said, this is victory. My husband going to be better. And when, I, when, when, when all of this was over, the phone rang. And the nurse just said to me, Miss Green, your husband just passed away. Just like that. I said, you sure? She said, yes. Your husband just passed away. And I said to God, and what was all this excitement and jumping up and down and speaking in tongues? But I learned afterwards that it was a spiritual victory on the part of my husband. It was a spiritual victory. The last few weeks in his sickness, some wish that I desired of my husband, I got it done. I got the opportunity to beat him. Most people wouldn't understand. It was a, it was a joy to beat him. It was a joy to him brush his teeth. It was a joy for him to lean on me. At nights I would only boil him. And when I was giving therapy through the COVID, he couldn't go to therapy. When I was giving therapy in the morning, each time when I lift his hands or give him the exercise, I would call on the name of Jesus. Call on the name of Jesus. Call on the name of Jesus. But as the Lord spoke to me and told me, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And that was a confirmation to me that my husband is happy. He's happy. He suffered a lot before he died, but he's happy. He's happy. And I guess he wanted us to go home. But God is good. Because God is comforting me. God is comforting me. Sometimes when I feel that loneliness come on, and I just say, Jesus, and then God will just hug me up and just say, He's okay. He's okay. It's a good thing. It's a wonderful thing. I feel good, you know. I am not in the least sad or anything. I am rejoicing. My husband is in heaven. And I don't want no one to mourn. No one to mourn or be sad. And come to me and ask me how I feel. I'm going to tell you how I feel. My husband is in heaven and I'm happy. And I'm happy. And I'm happy. He took care of me when he was alive. And when he's dead, he's still taking care of me. I want you to understand that. He's still taking care of me thank you so much sister green for sharing and also minister lewis from pentecostal tabernacle elsha uh, currently, this Thanksgiving service is being live streamed, and uh, we are so grateful for the assistance or from the assistance of Deacon Sheridan Forbes and Brother Odin Richard from Pentecostal Tabernacle, Wildman Street, who is currently assisting us. And we say thank you, sirs, for helping and assisting for this venture. I'm going to invite the ushers to come now and uh, the offering will be collected and this offering is in aid of building children church. You know currently in the COVID situation caused a lot of changes and one of the things that it had halted was our children church. We actually located a particular area where we're going to you know fix up and uh, create the space where we can have back service for the children. 
and uh, the Greens family had decided that they want to contribute towards this venture. And this contribution will be coming from the, the offering, and we give God thanks for this donation. Would you bow your heads? Dear God, we give you thanks for who you are. Thank you so much for the Greens family. And thank you so much for their commitment to the work of God. We pray, dear God, for everyone that gives, dear God, you continue to bless them. We pray, dear God, that whatever we receive, dear God, we indeed will put it in action. Take full control of this offering as we give you thanks in Jesus' name. While the offering is being collected, the Faith Chapel United Pentecostal Church Choral will be ministering. Troubles have got much more than enough. Many a days my path seems so rough. Many a day I wonder what to do. But then I go down to my Lord in prayer, and He assures me just what to do. Whatsoever may come, He see me through.
Thank you so much, praise team, for that number. Right at this time, I was going to invite Miss Katie Ann Green, daughter, and she'll be coming to do the eulogy. Right after which, we'll be having a musical tribute again from the Faith Chapel United Pentecostal Praise Team. Praise the Lord, everybody. I will be quick because I know some of you guys are dying to eat, as am I. So. <sighs> Hi, Dad. You finally got me in church. Duty, reliability, honor, respect. These are the qualities my father not only held in high esteem, but practiced every day till the time he left this earth. He was a quiet, shy, disciplined man. However, given the opportunity, he enjoyed spending time with family and close friends. Ricardo L. DeMaio Green was born in Victoria Jubilee Hospital on June 27, 1964, to parents Vivian L. DeMeyer and Roberta Green. He lived most of his childhood years in downtown Kingston surrounded by his six sisters and one brother. Throughout his childhood years and into his adult life, he was well-mannered and respectful, who possessed great values and ethics. He would uphold and instill these morals and principles with those who surround him. Though faced with many challenges and hardships throughout his life, he became determined, hardworking, focus-driven, and would stop at nothing to take care of his loved ones. It was this, this passion and desire that landed him a job at Rain Every Group of Companies at the age of 19. He started working with the company by cleaning the floors, and he did that with pride, and eventually he proved himself constantly till he was promoted to warehouse specialist where he served at Ray Never for 33 years. He took great pride in his work and always went above and beyond. He loved his job so much that we, his daughters, will often mention that given the opportunity, he would live at work than at home. However, given the constant mischief myself and my sister would get ourselves into, we could not blame him. At the age of 20, he met my mom, and for him, it was love at first sight. My mom was his first and only love. They were so much in love that they got married a year later, and within two years, had two amazing daughters. In me and my sister's eyes, our father was perfect. He proved that no matter what challenges he faced, he always do it all. He took care of the three of us so that we would never want for nothing. Even though he got baptized at the age of 17, he didn't give his life completely over to Christ till 1991 at the age of 27 through my mom's conviction. His determination and passion drove him to pursue various ministries at Faith Chapel here at UBC at Helsha, as well as Faith Apostolic Ministries. As his passion and love for God drew deeper, he decided to enroll in an advanced Bible course in 2001 
followed by Caribbean Bible Institute in 2003. Throughout our adult life as sisters, we saw dad in a new way. We were able to find time to discuss what parenting really meant, especially in a modern world that was fast changing. He gave me great advice on everything from teaching my son manners and responsibility to managing life as a single parent. He would teach my sister how to pursue her passion and trust her instincts always. It's difficult to imagine him not being around and I'm not sure how we will all cope as a family. His grandson John will miss him dearly. My mom won't have her best friend around anymore and my sister and I can't go on trips with dad anymore. But as we gather here today to commemorate his life, let's remember most of all that he's with the Lord Jesus or soon coming thing. Thank you. We'd like to announce uh, motor vehicles with the license plates 2271GK and 3979HE, you are blocking persons who would like to leave. So that's 2271GK and 3979HE. Thank you.
around me as he prophesies fulfilling the signs of the time. everyone just to stand and just to lift your hands right now everyone just stand and begin to lift your hands and magnify the king of kings hallelujah we're going home come on hallelujah we're going home we're going home hallelujah we're going home hallelujah and a midnight cry we are going home hallelujah 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 that's the home that we have hallelujah we're going home 
this is not our world. Hallelujah. It's in this atmosphere coming to minister to us, our brother, Minister Karim Makaj. So good to have you, sir. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Could we lift our hands to the holy wise God? Hallelujah. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is none like him. Hallelujah. There is none that can contend with him. Hallelujah. They call him the mighty big breasted one. He has never lost a battle. Hallelujah. Let us just praise him. Hallelujah. 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 He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be adored. There is none like unto him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a privilege to be called a child of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, we bless your name. Jesus. Just a little bit more, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Jesus, we adore you. Jesus, we magnify you. Jesus, we exalt you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Like to greet the national assistant, no, the assistant superintendent in charge of the department in his absence, Pastor Cooks, Presbyter King. Like to greet Bishop Daly. Like to greet ministers that are here. I'd like to greet the church board. I'd like to not only greet, but to give my condolences to the Green family. Brother Green, Deacon Green, uh, is my friend. Right? I remember having some discussions, not just surface. If anybody knows him, you'll know that he is one that you will have deep discussions with. Amen? I remember that because I, I look forward to some of those discussions to have with him. Amen. I would like to greet saints from faith apostolic ministries, saved and unsaved friends. I would like to greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus. Lax, um, Pastor Dawes, could you please pray? Lord Jesus, we thank you for your love and mercy. Thank you for this, another day that you have given us. We are in the midst of a memorial service. And we are asking you to continue to be with us, even at this moment. Your servant intends to make himself available to minister your word. I pray, Lord, that you will give him a very special touch, anoint him in a very unique way, and minister to those who are in need here today. Let your perfect will be done through him. We ask these mercies in Jesus' name. Thank you, thank you. Um, also, greetings from my wife and from the Garden Town family. Before you be seated, we'll just read two passages of scripture. I'll read in your hearing. First portion will be taken from the book of First Corinthians chapter 50 and verse 55. The second portion will be taken from First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 18. When you found it, could you please say amen? First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 55. O death, where is, thy, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, 
even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice of the archangel, and, the, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. You may be seated. like to speak to you briefly on this thought this we, death where is thy sting death where is thy sting you see ever since the fall of creation not sorry the fall of man from the starting of creation death was introduced Death was introduced through sin because the Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. The salary or the compensation package that you get from a lifestyle of living in sin, that salary is death. The Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. That gift is free. You see, we have two roads before us. The Bible tells us that the straight and narrow will bring us into eternal life with Jesus and the broad way that leads to destruction. Death, that word sting has to do, it was compared with a scorpion. When a scorpion will sting you, it not only sting you, but it leaves a deadly poison to, 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 to kill the victim. It's a defense mechanism that, that the scorpion was made with. Death has terrified mankind from eternity. No, from the beginning of creation until now. Death is a gateway to going into eternity for mankind. Death is nothing to be afraid of if you do not have a relationship with Jesus. Jesus made, gave, made a, gave a parable of the virgins, the ten wise virgins. Five were wise and five were foolish. You see, we have those that are ready waiting and those that need to be prepared. The sting of death, death was not made for mankind. Death was not made for man originally. And I will say it again, we were not created to die. We were created to live for eternity. Man was created without sin, without the false and all the issues that we have now, that was introduced through sin. Man was created to serve God. What we have here is not the end of the picture. What we have here in time is only temporal. What we see here, I call it a launching pad into eternity. You can either go into the path that lead into everlasting life, or you can go to the path that leads to eternal damnation. My brother here lays his body is, will be put to the ground. The Bible tells us that the flesh will go back to the earth. 
but your soul that is what is of great concern will your soul be cast into a place where they call the second death you see the bible speaks of the second death which is eternal separation from god and if anybody here have any loved ones children well, how would you feel if that person is taken from you and you will never see them you 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 you, you there's something in you that you feel that void there's something that you you it hurts for us to be cut off from life from eternity is a great price but when jesus came and was crucified and rose again the third day he conquered death and the grave when jesus came he gave hope to the hopeless when jesus came he gave life to the lifeless when jesus came he fulfilled scripture when jesus came he gave those that had no connection and relation with god hope we that are the Gentiles were never included in the, into the plan initially. The Bible said we were engrafted. When Jesus was walking along the coast and a certain woman went to him, and she's a Syrophoenician woman, he said, it is not me to give the children bread to the dog. You're not qualified for my miracle. You are not qualified. And I'm here just to say to you that there is a sting that death has. And to escape that sting, you need the salvation of God. You see, we have to be guarded against religion. Because many will say that I know God. When in fact you only know of God. Many will say that I am saved. When in truth you have only made a confession. The Bible tells us to escape the sting of death. We have to be wrapped up in Jesus. We must accept his plan of salvation. We must repent of our sins. Repentance is godly sorrows. Which means you must be sorry that you committed the act. And be willing to make the decision to turn from it to the best of your ability. It does mean you're perfect. Then the Bible tells us that we need to be baptized in the lovely name of Jesus. The Bible tells us that neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Bible tells us that we must be, that is when we go into the water and the name Jesus is pronounced over you. In Acts 2 verse 38 says for the remission or the removal of your sins. Then the Bible tells us again that we should arise in newness of life. Bible said we shall be filled with the Holy Ghost with that evidence of speaking in a new language. I, I don't know why some people have an issue, but to be bilingual overnight to me just sounds awesome. I didn't know I have any language until God touched me. I, I did not know this Jesus until I was filled with the Holy Ghost. Because the Bible tells us that flesh can only know flesh. But to know the things of the spirit, you need the spirit of God to reveal it unto you. To understand your purpose that God originally has for you. You have to be in contact or in a relationship with Jesus. To escape this thing of death, you must be ready waiting on Jesus. Not just be filled and baptized, but to have that relationship that will take you into 
the next life. When I heard that my brother here died smiling, I felt good. Nothing else didn't really impact me, but that part that he died with a smile on his face. He was baptized and filled. His course was finished. When your course is finished, and the day of God, when God calls your number, when your chapter is closed, and the scripture is mentioned, death, where is thy thing? Would you be called in that number that this thing of death did not impact your soul? Forget about the flesh. Forget about your trials now. Forget about your issues. When that number is called, will religion save you? See, the reign from Adam to Moses, but through Jesus Christ, we, had li we have life eternal. At the end of the day, we have heard many testimonies of persons on their deathbed. Those of regret, those of sorrow, those of remorse. Seeking after repentance and never able to attain it. All the riches and everything that they have. Is of no value. When that day is called. Death. Where is thy sting? O grave. Where is thy victory? Funeral is a time to reflect on our own lives. This is a going away service. We are not mourning. We are rejoicing. My only issue is that he went before me. Because I'm looking to go to the same place. Would we be like the five wise virgins that are ready waiting? Look at all that are around you. Everything is changing in an instance. And this is just the beginning of sorrows the beginning of sorrows take no thought for tomorrow tomorrow provides for itself the bible says be anxious for nothing in all things prayer and supplication unto it don't take it for granted that the life that you have now will be the same don't take it for granted that things will not change don't believe that the fundamental structure and your values that you have will not be tested but with Jesus but with Jesus we can weather, st weather the storm look at the life that he lived it will be a witness either for us or against us God bless you Just let's begin to just thank God for the word. And now just lift your hands and begin to thank God for the word. Thank God for the word. Is it well with our soul? And that's the question. Is it well with our soul? Have we accepted the Lord as our personal Savior? Has you accepted Him? Amen. If you have heard the word and you you're interested to give your life to the Lord with being baptized in Jesus' name, you can always come and talk to one of us here on the platform. We baptize you right now because salvation is that important. It's a matter of eternity. Hallelujah. Lift your hands one more time and thank him for the word. Thank him for the word. We are so glad that Deacon Green had accepted the Lord as his personal Savior. Absent from this body <laughs> is present 
with the Lord. That's our hope, and we give God thanks. We're going to ask the family just to come at the altar. Family members, I'm just going to ask you just to come at the altar. So good to have Bishop Garfield daily with us. And I'm going to invite him right now at this time to come and pray for the bereaved family. Lord everybody can we praise the Lord everybody amen amen just before we pray I really want to encourage this family pastor Dose said it earlier on that the devil really controls nothing he might be the God of this world common god and he does a lot of things but i like you to know that nothing can happen in history or outside of history that god does not really control there is nothing that happens nothing can really happen unless god make it happen or he allows it to happen so he is large and in charge and I want you to know that I want you to rest assured that God especially when it comes on to his children have it locked be encouraged God is a good God I really would want to also greet in their absence, Bishop Crooks, Pastor King, the other officiating ministers, Minister Dwayne Nelson, Minister Anne-Marie Lewis. I greet Pastor Dose. He said something earlier on and use it, it's true. I just said it. The devil has no control over anything you lean heavily on almighty god yes lean heavily on him we're going to pray i greet the praise team really wanted to greet them sister jojo sister ben ben amen sister dona sister flowers i really greet the praise team was blessed by the song i'm used to our folks i won't greet them i'm greeting you today and i really greet you in the wonderful name all the ministers all greet you in jesus name and i'm going to ask everybody because we are going to work together in prayer to support this couple minister lewis the lord bless you and your wife good to hear from you earlier on we are going to pray that the lord strengthen and keep and encourage and support this family all ladies except this little one that is going to grow up to be the man to do what men do in family settings and so we're going to pray for them can i ask everybody to stand in the name of the lord and we are going to pray together amen as we support them in jesus name can we pray together father in the name of jesus christ of nazareth we come before your presence we thank you great god for what you have been doing in the lives of your people we thank you mighty god that you will never forget your children in our eyes it might appear that god has forgotten because here is a young man that have left his wife, that have left his children, that have left his grandson. 
and it would appear how could God make this happen but we rest assured in the fact that you are God and you doeth all things well and in as much as nothing can happen outside of you allowing it to happen or making it happen we know that if God allowed it there has to be a good reason and for that we are satisfied and so in the midst of death we want to say today together that God you are a good God you are great and you are greatly to be praised we want to declare that the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away blessed be the name of the Lord mighty God I present this family to you Julian Kadian Sharon Green uh, John Wong Lord I present every one of them to you hold them in the hollows of your hands right now daddy is gone husband is gone and what do they do but we recognize mighty God that you are still alive and you always will be alive and you sit high and you reign right in the midst of men I present them to you I pray that you will be their comfort I pray that you will be their guide I pray that you will be their strength I ask you mighty God to superintend their lives I pray mighty God that you will navigate their steps every step of the way be their guiding light be their strength almighty oh God be their bridge over troubled waters have them to know that they can lean heavily on you and that you will be there to embrace them every step of the way I present them into your care and into your keep hold them in the hollows of your hand I pray and be the great God that you are at this time and onward in their lives we bless your great name we thank you for who you are and we thank you for what you've already started to do and you will continue to do throughout the rest of your their lives we give you thanks we glorify you bless them together and let them continue to experience your goodness we give you thanks in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name amen be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and wherever you are in your relationship with God this is an opportune time to draw nearer to God nearer my God to thee must be your prayer God bless you in the name of the Lord Minister McCoy I greet you too in Jesus name God bless you in the name of the Lord praise God praise God thank you Bishop Daly amen I want to encourage us to continue to remember the Greens family and support them amen support them support them right at this time I want to invite the praise team and they will lead us in the recessional hymn in the new Jerusalem I want to invite you all just to stand while they sing when the toils of life are over and we lay our armor down and we bid farewell to earth and burn the scales we shall meet and greet our love ones and our Christ we then be found in the new Oh, oh, oh. 
Let's 